Welcome, guys. My name is Dominic Atencio. Uh, I am a realtor here in Denver, Colorado, and this is the first episode of the Closing Disclosure Podcast. That's a catchy name, huh? I mm -hmm. thought you guys, yeah, I came up with it this morning. <laughs> I was like been racking my brain for the last couple of weeks of what I was going to name this, and I came up with that. So I think it's good. I think it, it, it's a closing disclosure is something that a lender provides um, right before closing that gives you all your final numbers. Uh, but for these guys, I have Juan and Brianna here today. They're past clients of mine. And what we are aiming to do is just give a little bit of insight into the home buying process, kind of what it was like, um, if it's all that it's built up to be as this scary process. or And it could differ from person to person. Some people are going to be like, oh, my God, it was awful. Uh, but we made it through. And some people are going to be like, man, I, I don't know what the big deal was about. So. Juan and Brianna, we closed uh, on your house last March, so you guys have been homeowners for a little bit over a year now. Um, first things, what made you guys want to buy a house? So we were paying about the same in rent as our current mortgage, living with roommates in an apartment. You know, we were over the apartment life and decided it was time to really focus on our relationship and pursuing our future, and we thought buying the house was the next step with the market. Sure. Now, what made you want to buy a house as opposed to just rent separately from, you know, roommates? We wanted to build the equity for yeah. us. Figure if you rent from, you know, you're saving money still, but if you own the house, it's you're getting that money back, you know. Right, and Bree, you you are. Um, you go inside everything that you do, right? You uh, you, you are. You, you study everything. So you knew all the benefits before buying, right? You, it, this wasn't like a, hey, we should just check out if we could buy a house. No. This was something that you were like, we need to do this because this, this, and this, right? And you were setting up long-term goals. Mm -hmm. I had been talking to Juan about it for about a year. He was like, well, I never thought I'd buy a house. And, mm, we need to buy a house. You know, that's the American dream. Um, it's going to be worth it in the end. Sure. And so... We figured it out. Now, what were you expecting when, when you like started with the process? You being, you, you done, you did tons of research before buying. What were you expecting walking in? Um, honestly, I was expecting it to be a pretty easy process. You put in an offer, offer gets accepted, you close on the house. Um, you know, even with all the research I did, I had a shocking moment. <laughs> this is not how it works. What was that shocking moment? I think it was when Juan looked at our first condo that we looked at. I was at work, and we decided to put in an offer. And that night, we realized, uh, this is not going to work. We don't have the cash for this, or we need to rearrange our budget. And that's when I had emailed you, like, hey, we're going to back out. And you're like, no, 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 wait. We need to talk. Yeah. <laughs> and Juan, what was that? I mean... What was that night like that, that I mean, you guys, so you, you, you build up, right? So the, the process for you guys was, was like you said, you, you expected this easy process and it was, um, I, I pulled some numbers for us. So the, per, the first step to buying a home is getting pre-qualified. Um, so we started some dialogue with each other. I sent your information over to the lender on January 29th. You guys were pre-qualified the next day. Mm -hmm. So that like, you know, in your head, you're like, boom, cool. This is going to be easy. Mm -hmm. This is this is how I thought it was going to be. Um, but now you wrote this first offer. You go look at houses. I remember one. The funniest thing is we're walking around the house and Juan's FaceTiming Brianna. <laughs> and he's like, I think you'll like this. And I think I think I remember the house now that I'm like going back. It was that one. It was like snowing that day, I think. Yeah. And we met. Um, but what was that conversation like or, or what? What was it that made things too real or what was that? I guess when we actually looked at all the numbers that we were going to get involved in, we realized like, man, that's a lot of money. Can we afford this? Could we do this on our own? Could we make it happen? And then thinking about all the other fees, taxes, PMI, um, this house doesn't qualify for an FHA loan, so you, you can't go this route. You have to go conventional. And a little so, overwhelming? Yeah, that was a lot. To say the least, huh? Because you look at a house and you fall in love with it, but then, oh, well, that's not our loan type. And that heartbreak is, so we wrote um, five offers before getting one accepted. Mm -hmm. So you guys went through that process of falling in love with the house, getting up enough courage to once you see the note because when we would go out, I would say hey this is going to be the payment this is what you're looking at closing cost wise to build that up five times and get rejected what was that like it was hard especially the the first one the one off Bannock the one that we really fell in love with 
we had everything we wanted and to be the second best offer and still not be able to get it. Just and I think it really made you think, okay, I'm not going to fall in love with a house. We're just going to put in an offer. What the heck? And you got to a point where you didn't have any emotions. Like you weren't connected to the house. Until Did at any knew. point from writing, let's say the, the first offer, the Bannock house to the last offer, did you ever feel like you were settling for houses at that point? I wouldn't say settled because the house that we got now is everything that we want on our list. Three bedroom, two bath, the one car garage, the yard for the dog. It's just we fell in love with that place because it was the first place that we said, man, we could see ourselves living here. I think I did have to settle on what the inside looked like. I wanted totally done, you know, granite countertops. And I had a realization that, that was not going to happen. So when you turn that, that's when things started opening up yeah. a little bit, right? We started looking at um, more of the, almost the infrastructure of the house yeah. of what can this be as opposed to what is it? And that did open up a lot of possibilities for us. So we got pre-qualified on January 30th. We closed on March 31st. We actually closed a little bit early than yep. our uh, contract date was. So that saved us some money on some closing costs. Um, I just looked at that. You know, when you're thinking a year back, you don't remember all this. So I started, <laughs> you know, going through all of our paperwork and kind of looking at things. Um, 60 days. That's that. You know, you went into this process saying it's going to be easy. 60 days is still pretty fast. Yeah. From from getting pre-approved to closing. Um, what was the most stressful part of the entire process for you? <laughs> I guess for us was remember, you know, remember if you were playing the game with other family because they wanted more than what the house appraised for and they didn't let us know until the last day we were signed in. That was stressful. So, so in this particular case, we put in an offer over asking price and the appraisal came in significantly low. Now we had a built in clause that we were going to pay X amount of dollars over this appraisal. Um, that's what's called an appraisal gap. And you, you know, you guarantee that ours was, wasn't substantial, but it was something it, it separated our offer from other offers that were in there. Um, and we got accepted because of that. And that's what we were willing to do, right? Yeah. And it's just this game because you figure this is legal binding paperwork. Yeah. Like we already said what we were going to do and <laughs> they come back. Um, but in our case, we we had a couple things. We knew that the seller was buying another house. So we kind of had that chip. Um, and what were they going to do? Put the house back on the market. So we stayed tight and, you know, I tried to stay as tight. Yeah. And the thing that I can never do for you guys is let you know that I was stressed too. You know, <laughs> like I have to be, and and you have to do that for your clients. You have to, you have to be that rock for, for them to be like, Hey, it's fine. We're going to, it's going to be fine. Um, but yeah, I was stressed too. And, um, and it's crazy because you, you, you do all this back and forth with the agent and then you meet like three days later and it's like nothing happened. Yeah. And you're like, we were just going back and forth. You know what I mean? Like you had me crazy. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And it, it, it is, it is insane. Like the people that you meet along the way. Um, what was closing day like for you guys? I know you guys, I think you both took work off. Is that right? Uh, yeah, we both took work off. Well, no, you I left early. You yeah, left early. I was off that day. And it how was stressful was closing day? I mean, were, were, were you not like this? It's not done until it's done type of thing. Yeah. And I was driving. I left work early and hit bumper to bumper traffic and thought, oh, my God, I'm going to miss my closing. We're not going to be able to close on our house. It and was raining there. that day, too. Yeah. So we're all scared. I was like, man. <laughs> The weather's crazy for us, so. And then all the paperwork, and we're sitting there looking. How was signing the paperwork? Well, uh, I mean. It wasn't that bad. A lot of people say get some armrest pillows because you're going to sign your whole life away for like 10 hours. It's just all signatures, right? Yeah, and it's, it wasn't And it's that stuff bad. that you like signed already, so it's like. It can it, it, some closers are really, really good, and they can move through everything super fast, and some are a little bit slower, but I've always thought that closing was fairly simple. Um I think the only bad part about our closing was we didn't get the keys right after. So we didn't get that instant gratification of it. What did we have? A couple days? Yeah, we had like six days until we actually got the keys after closing. So what was that like? That interim time of, of having to wait? We were waiting. And like hoping that the house doesn't burn down. Yeah. I mean, I'm sure that that was like, you know. Because I've never, I've never dealt with that. I bought two homes in my life and both of them were flips. So they were vacant. Which was really hard because you don't you you walk in and you're like I can kind of see this house coming together but not really and you where you, you guys you walk in and you go okay here's this here's yeah. this I can kind of look at that but that six days what was that like? 
nervous. We we're like, oh man, we would, we actually drove by the house one time <laughs> just to just to check on it to make sure it was still there, but to make sure it hadn't burned down. Yeah. yeah. It was pretty wet during, uh, you know, and still it rained, like you said, on closing day. It's like a wedding. You guys got a wedding coming up. Yep. A rainy day on closing day isn't as bad as, I guess, a rainy day on on your wedding day, right? So, um, so you guys moved in. I know that you took one, like, a week off of work that first week. Is that right? Yes. And you did. What did you do in that first week? So, in that first week, I had this big plan that I was going to be able to paint the whole house in two days and move in, relax my last two days of vacation, but that did not go that way at all. It took me literally the whole vacation just to paint the house. So, Did you have all the painting tools before, or did you have to go buy them? Well, we saw this promotion Lowe's was doing like 30% off on your first transaction, so we spent, I think, what, five or six hours in Lowe's buying everything, With paint, two trim, huge cards. the flooring. We weren't going to do the flooring, but since they had that deal, we did the flooring ourselves, so we... We ended up spending like six hours and a couple thousand at Lowe's. Now, have you hired any contractors to do any work in the house? No. Zero. So you guys have done every single thing in the house. I will tell you that the house is amazing. We had a housewarming party. Um, I don't know. Do you remember when it was? It was like July. Mid- July. Yeah. yeah. It was. It was fairly quickly. Mm-hmm. It's actually uh, like fairly a week quick ago. after the uh, after you actually closed on the house, but hardwood floors throughout the main level, and you did all this work by yourself. How hard was it to do the hardwoods? No well, how hard was the hardwood? It was definitely, a, like they say, a relationship test. Cause... I think I remember, yeah, you guys I, I'm talking to you, I think, either right before or right after. It We're watching been... YouTube videos. No, this is how you do it. No, I think this is how you do it. And we didn't have the right tools. Did you rent a... Well, luckily, one of my coworkers, she had an air compressor and oh. a nail gun. So, cause... Oh, so yours are like the legit hardwood? No, no, that's just so they click. That's the, oh, they're click. Okay, but you had to do the trim. Oh, the trim the for the. Na- oh yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. It was. <laughs> I tried it once, and like one of my real good friends helped, and by helped, I mean did it, and I <laughs> helped him. You know what I mean, type of thing. But yeah, that's a lot of respect for for doing all the work yourself. Um, lots of paint, and yeah, I mean it looks amazing. And then you did the outside of the house as well. You guys put a lot of work into there. What has um, been the biggest benefit of buying a home in this last year what have you seen other than just being able to walk around in your underwear that's what i like to do in my house because i don't have any roommates or anything like that other than just that privacy and you know i know you were looking to get away from that and really be able to focus on each other and you know have a space together what's been the the biggest benefit I think looking at all the houses selling in the neighborhood and the prices going up and knowing we have that equity and that equity is ours right if anything happens yeah you know what or if you ever wanted to pursue something and you, you have kind of a safety net there or, you know, whatever the case is. Juan, what's the best? I mean, that's a pretty hard one to top. You <laughs> yeah. know, you guys have seen an increase of um, roughly the houses that are now selling in your uh, neighborhood are roughly 50 to 60,000 more. And, and when I say neighborhood, I mean two blocks away. Yeah. So it's not like, oh, the comps within a mile are, you know, it's literally the houses next door mm-hmm. are selling for 50 to 60,000 more in just one year. Yeah. What's the biggest benefit that you've seen, Juan? Well, just our happiness that we could say that we own a home. Not a lot of people nowadays can say that they own their own home. And for me, that's what is the best feeling for me. Of course, money's nice, equity's nice, but to go home and call that place your home is, I think, the best feeling. I think he takes a lot of pride in the yard, too. We he get- was just telling me, yeah, <laughs> that people drive by yep. and are like, you're, you're, you have one of the nicest yards on the block. All because of him. I got to bring him by and, and have him come by and show me some tips. He just says it's water, but I know it's more than just... Uh, he's being <laughs> modest, huh? He, yeah, he goes, it's just water. Yeah, no. he's like meticulous. He probably cuts it with scissors. No, I, I should, huh? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, that, I mean, and that's one thing that I, that every approval that I come across, I say, hey, congrats, man. This doesn't happen for everybody. Just the fact to get approved, it, it does take hard work. I mean, you, you do have to take certain steps to even get approved, but then to go through the process close on the home, you know, and then take care of, like you said, we were talking about something that you have to do with the house and you're like, yeah, it's just, that's just what is part of being a homeowner. So there are a lot of things that go into it, but the return and and the overall, you know, uh, payoff is definitely great. What advice would you guys give 
to potential buyers or uh, people that are looking, you know, starting on the cusp of, hey, I think I want to buy a house or I think this is something I want to do. What, what advice would you give them? Um, I would definitely make sure you are ready. Is your credit in check? Do you have the right employment history? Do you have enough cash on hand? Because we had so many different expenses come up that we were like, okay, I'm glad we do have the cash for this because if we didn't, what would we do? Sure. Um, so really making sure financially you are ready to do it because it's a big step. It is a big step. Juan, what, would, what advice would you give people? I'd say just uh, be ready to be a handyman, you know, because there's going to be a lot of problems that occur in your first year. I'm trying to remember that term they say when you buy a house. That first year, you're just fixing everything. There's a term. I can't remember it. But uh, Is the freshman 15? No, that's like something that. different, right? Yeah. <laughs> it's like that, but on your on yeah. your psyche for things that can go. Yeah, I mean, there's not a landlord to call, right? No. You can't. You're you're the landlord now. Um, and there's there's some really good things that you can put in place, you know, to cover yourself, warranty mm-hmm. stuff like that. But at the end of the day, you're responsible for this stuff. So uh, definitely good advice. Be prepared financially. Um, be prepared emotionally. You know, yeah. there's the, from you guys, you know, the heartbreak of five offers not being accepted, um, and then being prepared um, mentally to be, you know, to take on the things that are going to be. Uh, that pop up and arise with the house so well thanks guys for being here i appreciate it um best of luck with you guys going forward you guys have a wedding i i'm excited for that you guys have a little bit of equity maybe you can pull out a second you know a second on the house if you so that's something that comes along with ownership like you have a little nest to be able to put into um you know or you could pay all cash if you guys uh, (laughs) want but yeah i mean that's something that you can do a low interest rate on a on a arm or something or not an arm but on a heloc Mm -hmm. uh equity line that that's always something that's there for you so uh looking forward to what happens with the house and really excited for you guys thank you all right thanks guys for listening we appreciate it and uh we'll see you on the next episode